Hi, Mary. <laughs> Does it work? Can you can you hear me okay? I don't hear any. Yes, perfect. So just say thanks for for all the nice compliments. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everybody for all the very nice compliments they gave on the video. And also I want to say thank you to, to Kirk, my husband. He literally put everything together and in a matter of a month totally learned how to use iMovie software and we dug out all of the years old videos i went through hours of you know many videos that we had taken and kirk put it all together for me so i really appreciate it okay so i guess first of all we'll uh see if we have any questions here did you keep them all Yes, I have all of my purple pinchers, and unfortunately, my uh, Indonesian blueberries have all passed. Are the adults very tame? Uh, I didn't really handle my babies that often. Um, I'm one that likes to play with my big crabs. I have a bunch of jumbos. Um, but yes, I'm starting to handle them more now that they're getting bigger and and they're getting more used to it. And it says, have any of your captive babies given you eggs since they reached maturity? Would you be willing to give it another go if they did? Um, my yes, actually, the um, Indonesian blueberries started mating at a very young age. I have uh, photos of them, and I want to say that the I caught them mating probably at around two years old. And then my clapeatus um, didn't seem to mate until around year four and five. But um, as far as captive breeding, it was such a long time consuming venture. Um, the way I did it, I used um, the individual crab attacks filled with salt water. And I did like three or four water changes a day and I would um, feed them, you know, a couple different times a day. and it was just so time intensive that I think I'm going to leave that up to Mary and, and the others that are wanting to continue on with it. But I'm happy to be here as a source. And Stacy wanted to know how long did they live, the Lilas? The Lilas, let's see, I have some notes here. Um, let's see. I think it was 2016 that I was down to nine of my sea Lila. And then um, Clypeatus, I still have probably 13 of those. But um, unfortunately, the sea lila, I would find shells. And they reminded me a lot of um, Ecuadorian crabs, how they kind of dish out their shell, you know, making the shell wear through the shell itself, the interior, causing it to become sharp. So I suspect that maybe they succumb to ab abdomen injuries from from finding those shells. My tank is actually outside. So I'm in an office right now in my house, but I keep most of my crabs outside. That's participated in that. Let's see, are the photos of the tanks you use? Uh, we looked around. Are there photos of the tanks you use? The tanks I use, I don't actually have photos of, of those other than a close up of uh, my C. Lila males made, or, male mating, but um, they were 40 breeder tanks. And um, then when my clapeatus, at that point, I no longer had the blueberries um, and my clapeatus were too large for those. So I put them outside in my, my very deep substrate tank. And Jessica's wondering, did the PPs and Lyolas need significantly different tank conditions? I actually kept my PPs and Lila's together. I uh, started out putting them in different tanks, but they both had the same identical conditions. Um, basically, like we would keep any hermit crab, both fresh and saltwater dishes. They ate the same foods. Um, yeah, I, then I eventually moved them in together and they were fine. They coexisted just fine together. That's frustrating to lose them, but interesting. Yeah, 
the way I find these shells being as sharp as they are, I don't know how any crab couldn't have an abdominal injury from that. Um, I'm going to leave the breeding and selling them to Mary. She's doing such a fantastic job at it. And I'm hopeful that I can be here if there's anything that Mary needs or that if she has any questions, I'd love to very much stay a part of it. But I think um, I'm going to hang up my breeding hat. Did you keep the two species, the zoea, differently? No, the zoea, I, I kept them. I started them in identical situations. Um, both were done on small scale uh, in like two to three gallon crab attacks. And I would fill, fill it with instant ocean water and then um, instant ocean salt water. And I would feed them and do like bring the salt water down maybe a third of the way and do three to four water changes. My biggest fear was that I would lose them due to fouling of the water. I maybe did too many water changes, but I'd rather err on the part of having too many water changes than lose them to conditions that weren't good. And Risky wants to know, how long have you known Felix from Indonesia? I don't actually know Felix. We had a mutual friend in common, and that's um, how I ended up getting some of his crabs. But um, I know Felix is very well known in the crab community, and hello, Felix. <laughs> See how big were your babies at two years if they were mating at that age at two years? At two years, the they're... probably the um the photo of the sea lila that's very purple, the last photo of um he would be of mating age. He was one of my prolific maters actually. Okay. The water changes I did um just by doing them myself sucking up the salt water in the um, tubes, the airline siphon. tube. Yeah, <laughs> siphon, excuse me. But yeah, it, it's not a pretty sight like Mary mentioned yesterday, but it's something that needs to be done. And I would actually put um, a desk lamp to draw the larva to the front of the tank. And then I would go to the rear of the tank with my siphon and um, do my water changes that way to avoid uh, sucking up Larva. Yes, I was pretty good about checking the salinity of my instant ocean water. Um, I did things very basically. Um, I have a friend that gave me some pointers. He's in the aquarium business, and he said he would just fill his jugs of, of water and allow him to sit out for 24 hours after he had added salt water. Um, I did that too. That way I didn't even use um, dechlorinator drops. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> Hopefully I haven't missed any questions. I guess if people don't have any other questions, then I will... Yes, I do still have the adults. Lily is one of my favorite um, crabs, and I've had her, gosh, for maybe going on um, like 18 years now. We don't know Lily was one of the breeding females, but unfortunately, I no longer have my um, Indonesian blueberries. So, Hi, Mary. Hi, get some moral support, I appreciate it. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, moral support, but I also just wanted to just 
thank you profusely. I know everybody's typing it, but sometimes it's just nice to hear it in person. I mean, I don't know how many people you made cry just now, but no. I'm guessing <laughs> you have to cry. <laughs> well, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. I really appreciate you asking us to be part of this. Um, and we're really happy to, to be here. That's actually yeah. Cool. It actually is what spurred us on to take all of that video off of old hard drives. We had to get programs to be able to even view it at this time period because it's so old and uh, put this together. So thank goodness you did. Mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine the loss to the hermit crab community if we hadn't had that. I mean, I think you're going to feel ripples from this. Um, for a long time you you know i i don't know if dr tudge was in there or not but um you know I, I, just the close-ups the detail uh, i'm sure the music is also what made me cry because <laughs> i'm sorry i know you don't need that. <laughs> but oh and and just for everybody who's listening this was, we didn't know, like you, I know your talk was meet me under the microscope and I really should have asked, but I was like, great, that sounds interesting, microscope, whatever. And then it came in and um, we were just all gobsmacked. And if I'd known, I promise you, I would have put it as a headliner. And oh, I, that's, I appreciate that, but I certainly wouldn't want to detract at all from what you're doing. I just thought this video would be some video that could complement what you guys are doing. And originally, it, I wasn't even sure what I was doing, but because I do have some other interesting stuff, but not enough to really make enough of a talk out of. So well, maybe next year. Maybe you next year. Now. <laughs> I better start working on it now, though. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great. Um, Looks like so. Christopher is here now. Dr. Tudge? Oh, good. Good. Yes. Okay, let's see. Yep, I'm here. I'm stunned too. Thank you very much, Dr. Tudge. It's nice to meet you and um, you've been doing an excellent job. Very interesting talks. Tammy, how do you video through the microscope? I'm going to answer that. Yeah, I'll let my husband. Hey there, it's Kurt. Um, so we've basically, we found, um, it's called, uh, the brand is Modic and they make a USB uh, video camera that fits right in the eyepiece of the microscope. So it would fit in the mono microscope, if that's what they're called. And then the binocular microscope, we just put it into one of the eyepieces. And basically it was only a one megapixel camera. So that's, we basically took the video and then we ran it through some software, some, um, uh, what do they call it? Artificial intelligence software that kind of cleaned it up a bit. But that's why it's kind of still jerky and grainy because it was only, you know, 11 years ago, only a one megapixel thing. I think now they have a, I think the, the company's still in business and I think um, they make like a five megapixel or eight megapixel thing that fits in an eyepiece. So it's pretty cool. Lots it's hard to imagine better quality. I mean, you could see the veins. I loved where you showed the, the tail separating from the Telson in the molt. And I mean, wow. just. I was shocked that I got video footage like that. I literally camped out under that microscope hours. You know, <laughs> but when I did that, and then I'd run off and manage my brick and mortar store. And so, it, I mean, it got crazy, as you know. Yeah. The whole breeding thing can be very hectic. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for sure. Let's see if we have other questions. Oh yeah, I wonder if Felix knew too. Did you out? Did he? Did he ever know that he helped you make history? He found out today. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I, I actually gave um, sent him a little message before this, just because I knew I, I had mentioned his name and I thought he might like to see that. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Uh, did you check the salinity content while you were doing it, or mixed according to directions? Yes, I was very, um, yeah, I definitely stayed with, you know, correct salinity of what Instant Ocean says and, um, you know, was very careful with all that. And I probably ended up doing too many water changes so, you know, just because I was so paranoid that feeding them that I was going to end up causing a die off. And yeah. 
at night I was too scared to actually leave anything in there. So the poor things went without anything at night just for, you know, yeah, same. <laughs> same. Um, uh, what was I going to ask? Oh, shoot. I lost it. I'll look and see if there was, Oh, did you, I remember, did you, um, try to remove sheds? Did you, did you work on that at all? Or I would suck them up when I was doing my water change. Yeah. I just tried to get anything I could out of there. There was always like a layer of kind of sludge on the bottom. Yeah. So, yeah. I would just make my rounds with my little, you know, air hose, <laughs> whatever I could and try not to get the larva. Yeah. And then you transferred them back when you did. Yeah. That's it. But I tried not to do that too much either because then I was sucking up that dirty water and ugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the water changes doing manually are not not all they're cracked up to be. There's got to be a better way, but I mm -hmm. haven't found it. It's very hands on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Do you still have the breeding pair? That's one of the questions. I have my purple pincher and I don't have the Lila anymore, unfortunately. Yeah, they were a lot more temperamental than my baby young Clypeatus were. Yeah, I'm real interested to see. I just got some from my local pet store, but I think probably by way of Felix. And I have I think I have three, so... Um, so we'll see if they even manage to mate. I don't know if they will. And you've um, already sexed them, so you know what you have? At at present, I be, I've sexed two, both males, and I believe the third one is a male too. So, um, and there's a woman, I, I don't know if now when they're harvesting them, they're only taking males for purposes of leaving breeding females. Yeah. But um, the other person in Buffalo, Brianna, who got, um, some with me and she has some and I have some so we could hopefully get a female between us. Uh, she hasn't found any females either. So if they change, we'll know for sure that, you know, maybe that's answers Dr. Tudge's question too. I should probably get in there and do Moa's ID for Dr. Tudge so we can do um, positive reading, but we'll see. Yeah, that's on that subject. I had a crab that I ended up with one gonopore. So I suspect that maybe it was in the same situation as what you're saying. Um, maybe, you know, in the middle of a change, but it could have also been, you know, a problem with its mold too. Yeah. A lot of people have seen that um, just one gonopore and super interesting. I'm sorry. I'm just looking down the yeah. <laughs> Laura Carroll, who has also tried to, um, raised Zoe, said, I don't know how she had time to take the videos. I don't think she did anything else, Laura. I, <laughs> I did videos, and well, actually, Kirk I can attest to that. Doing the she videos. would spend hours yeah. and hours and hours just staring at her babies. You know, it, it was... A true introvert. Yeah, it's, I'm amazed at her patience, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, I told Stacy how amazing it was, and she didn't watch it because she wanted to be shocked. And she had no, you know, she was more shocked than she thought she would be because she was just seeing it for the first time. Well, thank you very much. It was fun to make. Uh, someone asked who did the soundtrack? That was just uh, on um, uh, YouTube. You can get, you can find free music, and that was the longest clip, so that's why I picked it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Longest and most relaxing. <laughs> it worked out good, but it was just, we didn't know ahead of time. We just found it on YouTube. Yeah. It made it even more magical. Um, Kelsey was asking if one of you could type in the name of the camera that was used, even though you said it, she she didn't catch it. I don't think I caught it either. I tried to. I think Stacy actually found the website. It's Motic, M-O-T-I-C. Oh. Okay, perfect. I, yeah. I haven't scrolled down enough. I see somebody asking if I put babies on a slide to view them. Absolutely. Did I put them on a slide all the time? I'd take them in a little pipette carefully and, you know, put them in a micro uh, slide that had a little well in it and put a little salt water. And of course, 
little food too. Make sure that they were eating while they were under the microscope. <laughs> That's so cool. And that was our Artemia we were seeing swimming around, right? Around That's them. Correct, yeah. It's incredible. Um, what type of microscope? I don't yeah, we don't know what type of microscope it is offhand. Okay. Um, I have a regular basic, one, yeah. basic microscope, and then I have a compound microscope, which would give the um, wider out type of shots to be able to see them. Brooke asked if there were any articles you used or information you used to help you along in the process. Absolutely, and I give all of those references at the end of my video if you want to once you do the replay, you can go ahead and um, you know see what those are, and they're, most of them are found on Google, Google Scholar. And then, of course, uh, Tony C. Nabita, his website was invaluable. <laughs> uh, Stephanie, I feel like I'm in the presence of crab royalty, so. <laughs> Okay, girly too. It's very mutual, Mary. You're crap royalty, believe me. What you're doing is just awesome. Yeah, and why do we do it, right? Like, can we just like have a philosophical, <laughs> strange moment? Like, why would we do this crazy? Because the babies are so doggone cute. Yeah, they and, really and it, little miracles, right? Just yeah, they truly are. I yeah, I don't. I think that's. I think that's pretty good. They are so cute. You want to, and you know what they can grow up into. Right. Right. We love our adult crabs. Absolutely. Here they are, these little, completely different beings. Yeah. I mean, they go through such change. I think the magical moment is the walking onto land too. I mean, all the molds, yes, but yeah. what a leap right? Oh, I know. You've got great footage of them coming ashore from your sea to land transition tank. Yeah, just, but even the, well, you know, just, oh, I'm going to leave the water and breathe air now. <laughs> yep. <laughs> see how that goes. Um, uh, all right, let's see. There are a few simple questions that I'm not going to ask us because they can be answered in other places, like how to sex crabs. And okay. um, I believe you kept all your all your babies, right? Or oh, yeah. Did you any? yeah. Yeah. No, I didn't sell any at that point or give any away. Yeah, I don't blame you. Yeah, my uh, clapeatus are actually my grand crabs because, mm -hmm. of course, Lily is one of my favorite female jumbos that I've had for ages. Yeah, I have um, I have favorites too. <laughs> I would call them grand crabs too. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think we let's see. I'm trying to catch up. Um, there's an off-topic question which you can answer or not. It says, "What flea market did you sell at for a long time? In I what?" Sure. I, um, I was at Renegers Flea Market in Mount Dora Florida. Yeah, in Florida. That's just north of Orlando. And I started out, just packed up my car um, and went up to the flea market. Then eventually that transi transitioned into opening a little brick and mortar store. But that was back when um, the recession started. So that two years kind of ended due to that fact. And then I just um, have been online ever since with the hermit crab patch. Yeah, yeah. I think m most of us have, have. I mean, you're the very first people I ever, I bought anything from. And look at us now. I know, <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, Dr. Tudge says, just think about this, because we, you know, that perspective shot. The ocean is full of millions, I would say billions even, of these babies every year, year after year. You know, you go swimming, you might get a mouthful of them in, in <laughs> right? Like, they're full. <laughs> you can't see it. Well, no, that's amazing. 
Ooh. how they make it to land. That would be an interesting thing to know more about, you know, with currents and because it is timed. So, you know, there is timing to it. Uh, Stephanie asked if you were prepared for the eggs, if you knew they were coming or did you react on the spur of the moment to try? Well, with the Indonesian blueberries, I was pretty much caught off guard. Um, with the Clypeatus, I was expecting that because I had been trying to hatch those um, in years before. But um, yeah, the blueberries caught me by surprise. <laughs> Uh, Jean wants to know if jumbo babies are larger or smaller than medium sized babies. I, yeah, I wouldn't think so. Right. It's, oh, it's baby. spawned from a jumbo crab. Is that, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that's what she meant. Okay. No, I think, um, I think they're pretty much all alike as far as, uh, crabs that are of mating age. Can I just go ahead and address uh, Brooke's question? Yeah, please do. She asked, Tammy, did you find the stage five larva eating the megalopa? That is interesting to me because no, I found the exact opposite. Um, but you, Mary, said that you've, you and other people have had the actual stage five larva going after megalopa, right? That's the first year I tried, I, I just assumed it was, I could see them, you know, going at it. And it, it seems so natural to me that it would be the megalopa that were doing that with their new claws. But mm -hmm. the more I observed them, I didn't have a microscope, but the more I observed them, to me, um, it was the stage five eating the megalopa. And once, like before I, before I wasn't in a rush to remove the megalopa, and they, I would find just the the front half, like the delicious tail would be gone. Oh, and I yeah. thought the megalopa were eating each other. But then when I started taking out the megalopa as soon as they changed, first thing in the morning is when it happened to me, and putting them in the transition tank, they weren't eating each other in the transition tank and they weren't getting eaten. So, I, you know, that was my conclusion. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, 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 I stand by it. I think that's what I think that's what was happening. Yeah, maybe I didn't realize and I was assuming because the megalopa have claws. Wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's definitely <laughs> interesting. And it looks like Dr. Tudge says the timing of the land transition is very tricky because the megalopa have to get back to their home island or beach or nearby. So they have to ride the currents to get them back to their birthplace days or weeks later. Yeah, it sounds like it's all a numbers game. Yeah. Yeah, so billions become millions, then become thousands, then become, you know, that's one thing. In my tanks with no predators, I saw huge, I mean, aside from their siblings, no predators, I found huge losses and out of a spawn of 10,000, 390 made it to land with help, with perfect shells, with food on the way out, like all they had, as much as I could tell, they had all the benefits. Um, and still, it's just, yeah, numbers. Yeah. Numbers. But that's great. I mean, that's a very high success rate, I think. Well, thank you. Um, Abby wants to know, how did you know how to breed them? Well, I didn't know how to breed them. I basically just, it was trial and error. I had tried four or five times prior to that whenever I had uh, females with eggs and um, did what research I could find, you know, read all the research, um, you know, different studies that helped me. And um, my friend that did, you know, aquarium, had an aquarium store, he would give me pointers and between all, combining all of that together, it, it actually worked out. I always try to draw a distinction too between breeding and raising. I, I you know, I, I try. I the crabs do their part, and then and then we do our part, right? Right. So, we can't we can't make a mate. All no. we can do is give them the proper conditions to where they feel like they're in the wild, you know, and then we do the rest with hopefully, you know, trying to 
bring their young to fruition. Exactly. I don't know if I have a higher success rate in the wild because there's no way to track them in the wild once they're hatched. You know, they're just gone and whatever comes back comes back. I, I can't imagine any way to track that. Yeah. Well, we're coming up on two o'clock. Um, we have, let me see, I don't even remember Darcy. Darcy's coming up with her talk. Um, Stacy's loading that one. So we can stay if we want, or we can go off camera and answer by text. If uh... I, I think if everyone is pretty much, um, you know, finished asking questions, then I'll catch the next, uh, next show. Yeah. Right. yeah but like everybody's saying, thank you. Thank you. You've just launched us forward. Oh, um, thank you. In an incredible way. It's well, I appreciate uh, that. so grateful. All right. Well, thank you again, Mary, and I will uh, talk to you later. All right. Sounds <laughs> good. Bye. Bye.